Joining me right now on Kumite TV is Rising Lightweight, Damian Brown. Beat down, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Just uh, training camp, finally. But you've been in training camp, right? You knew that this date was coming, so it's it's not really something that you had to, t you know, change, right? Uh, man, when was the last? Have I spoken to you since I got in the Grand Prix? No, we talked right no. before. Yeah, I didn't know it was coming, man. They uh -huh. they told me I wasn't in it. So they said that, um, you know, that he, the boss didn't want me in it. So uh, the last thing that I had heard, which was probably when I was talking to you, was that uh, I wasn't going to get in a spot in the Grand Prix. Um, and then I pushed a little harder on social media. And, you know, my manager was obviously on the pulse as well. But, <clears throat> you know, I put a bit of extra push on social media and I put... Um, I did a few extra interviews and did some stuff with Sherdog and then you guys and a few others. And then, uh, yeah, they rang me, man, like two weeks after that. And so about eight weeks out, I got told I wasn't going to. And then six weeks out, they rang me and said, can you get ready in six weeks? So, you know, I've been training for five months, man. Um, you know, I had a little bit of time off in between from an injury. But besides that, like I've been training every day for five months, twice a day, three days a week. And all I did was just added a couple of sessions in. So... Yeah, I mean, I've been training, but I didn't know about the date. You know, I knew when the Grand Prix date was coming up, but I, I was told that I wasn't on it. So, yeah, um, but I got six weeks notice. That's good for me, man. Well, it just shows you that fighters, man, they should be going out there and initiating, you know, interviews and, and getting out there and promoting themselves online and, you know, getting, getting the word out because it helps. It, it just helped you, right? Well, I think it helped me, you know, like I did, uh, I did, you know, I don't know what helped me and maybe they changed their mind. Like I'll never know what happened on Ryzen's end mm -hmm. of the deal. Like why all of a sudden I went from not getting a spot to getting a spot. I don't, I don't know that, you know, like, but all I can say is that I, I did my part and uh, I think that, um, you know, I got my spot conveniently after I did about five different interviews, you know, so in one week I did. Like you guys, we are Rising Podcast. I did, um, you know, Sherdog and a couple others here in Australia. And I sort of just, you know, created a little bit more traction, I guess. And maybe that pushed it over the edge. Maybe it didn't. I'm not sure. But, you know, I definitely think fighters need to put themselves out there. You can do that respectfully and you can do that in the right way without, without you know, talking rubbish and stuff. So I think that there's, um, you know, ways to do it. And I think that it helps, yeah, for sure yeah definitely there's all different ways to do it but there's you know your way of doing it which is going out there and pushing it and being respectful at the same time i know that winter has been going on in australia but spring is creeping in how has uh the weather change been for you oh man it's hot it's bloody hot out here i've got no shirt on i mean that could be because i'm in training camp but like uh it's hot out here but it's it's like kind of chilly in the morning and then kind of chilly at night but hot during the day but it's like 30 degrees over here, Celsius, 30 degrees, 34, something like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of warming up, but it's warming up real quick. But it's going to, like, flip side, right? In three weeks' time ago, Japan, it's going to be getting cold. So it's, uh, you know, fighting on the other side of the world all the time. It's in a different hemisphere. It's, it's different weather. So it's hard to get ready for that kind of stuff. I read that you wanted the tournament to be like a one-night deal. You know, what tr intrigues you about fighting three times in one night? Not doing three fight camps. <laughs> yeah, fight camps suck. Every fighter should say that. Like, I'm, I'm certain if you talk to 99 out of 100 fighters would say, if you talk to 100 fighters, 99 of them would say that the bit they don't like about fighting is fight camp. Well, that's the hustle. That's the grind. That's when, that's when your body breaks down. That's when, you, that's when you're sore. That's when you're tired. That's when your family suffers. Man, if we could fight every night and never have a fight camp, like fighters would love it. There'd be people doing it everywhere. But it's fight camps that make people. Um, it's yeah, it's fight camps that make people, you know, want to do it or not want to do it. I think like most fighters when they retire, it's not because they don't have it anymore to fight. It's because their body just doesn't hold up to the fight camp. So there's that, you know, not having to do three fight camps. I also just think that it's real old school, you know, like a lot of guys used to fight tournaments in one night. You know, you fight three times and that's the way it was. And uh, there's just a little something inside me that makes me want to do what people used to do, you know, before the sport 
football, I guess, before uh, no holes barred turned into the sport that it is today. You know, so we can still have the same rules and everything, despite only one night. I, I just don't think it's a. I just think it's cool and uh, something that makes me tick, um, and I would like to get ready for something like that. So. Well, you never know; it could happen, you know, in the future. But before you were announced to be a participant in this tournament, you were you were very adamant that you wanted to face Patricky Pitbull. How disappointed were you when you found out that Kyle Jerry was the first one in the first round? Man, I was shattered. Like, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, the fight that I got is, man, it's a fan-friendly fight. People are going to love this fight. You know, it's it's a classic fire beats fire fight. You know what I mean? Like, I can't sit back with this guy. He's going to pick, you know, pick his shots and flurries and lots of fancy kicks and stuff. Like, I've got to meet him in the middle, and that's what I'm going to do. So... I think this is a fan-friendly fight, um, but man, you know, I just, I just have this this thing where you know, if you're going to send someone across to a promotion that I'm signed in to kind of promote yourself and do a cross-promotion fight, I want that guy. You know, I, that's just part of me. You know, I want the hardest fight. I want the biggest name. I want the, everything that comes with having the hardest fight and the biggest name. You know, the paycheck, the publicity, the the sponsorship, the, you know, everything. And then the risk, you know, the risk makes me tick. When I go into fight camp and I feel like there's no risk, I, you know, you've got to ask yourself why you're doing it. And I think combat sports, there's a, there's a risk with everything. And the bigger the risk, the bigger the, uh, the drive, you know. Um, we're never unmotivated as, as athletes. If you're doing it for the martial arts aspect like I do, you train anyway, but the drive to push yourself during fight camp, that little extra you know, extra inch, extra mile, extra minute, whatever it is, I think that comes from having a bigger challenge. And I just felt like he was, um, you know, name-wise and, and whatnot, being the cross-promotion person and being sent in, I just felt like he was the fight that I wanted. But uh, but I'm super happy with the fight I got. I think um, Tofik Masayev is, uh, I thought he was the dark horse, you know, uh, going into this this tournament i think that he's super active he has a high work rate um he's got heavy ground and pound he's super aggressive he comes forward i think if you if you if you're going to have a round like one round and then have 10 weeks till the semi-final and final i think he's the kind of fight you want you know that he's going to be like a super aggressive meet in the middle kind of fight and he's the kind of guy you want to have a couple of weeks rest after before you go into camp again he's not the kind of guy you want in the semi-final so um you know, I plan on having a war with him and someone's going to go down, you know, no decisions. So um, if it goes to a decision, we're both going to be sore. But uh, that's that's what I that's what I plan on having and I think that that's the way to win the fight. And uh, that's what the fans want. And um, yeah. You guys have a, a, a common opponent. You know, you guys both have fought and defeated Darren Crookshank. Looking at that fight, have you watched it? And have you, you know, what's your breakdown of that performance that he had? I beat Crookshank in one round. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, look, you know, he's aggressive, but Crookshank was on the back foot, but Crookshank was on the back foot with me as well. So, you know, um, I think that's the way that Darren fights. He fights off the back foot. He's very good. He's got good lateral movement. He throws a lot of unorthodox strikes. So I, I just think that he fought him the same way I intended on fighting him, except he didn't shoot on, uh, on Masayev. And I don't think Masayev's got the submission game that I do. You know, I've got a lot of wins on my record by submission. And I just think that he, he's got more of a ground and pound top sort of game and not a submission game. So, you know, I just don't see him attacking submissions. So um, I don't think that... Uh, yeah, I just think the one, I think it was like one or two times that Darren shot on him. I just don't think he's at risk of being submitted. I don't think that they believe that they're at risk of being submitted against me. So, um, you know, I thought the fight was a pretty standard sort of fight. They both, they both kind of uh, exchanged at the same time and then that separation. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good fight. Um, but I think there's lots of, uh, you know, I know he's on an 11 fight win streak, but I think there's lots of um, there's lots of spots there for me to exploit. Uh, I think there's uh, I think I'm the better better uh, grappler, better wrestler, and I'm definitely the far more technical striker. So, you know, it's interesting. I think his aggression is something to really consider. He has 
Azerbaijan on his back. He's the only one from that country representing. You are the only one from Australia representing. Johnny Case is the only one from America. You know, you got three Brazilians, two Japanese fighters. Do you feel like you're carrying your country on your back when you enter Japan to take this tournament? No. No, not really. Uh, you know, there's been some other Aussies that have fought in in, uh, in Rosen now. And, uh, you know, I'm the only Aussie that's fought over there and won. But there's been, but you know, John Wayne Parr won that fight. He got robbed, by the way, for the record. I feel like he got robbed. But, um, you know, and uh, and Trent, Trent Gurdum, he's he's a good young fighter. He's got a bright future ahead of him. He's he's making ways internationally, kind of flying around doing his thing, and he'll come back and win as well. I don't feel like I have pressure to, you know, I don't feel pressure anymore like that. That kind of pressure, you know. Um, I've dealt with that. that. That's in the past, you know, fighting for my country and doing all this sort of stuff that. You know, I represent my country now and I represent it to the best of my ability, but I don't think that the people that follow me are going to treat me any different if I lose. And, uh, you know, I think that if uh, if I go, go on to win it, then, um, you know, people will just treat me the same. So I don't, I don't really feel added pressure from it. But, yeah, definitely, uh, I definitely hold the fact that I represent my country to a high regard. When you found out, you said six weeks out, you know, what, you know, other than the cardio, did you start, you know, doing anything else extra or did you start working with some more people, bringing more people in certain, uh, training partners? No, man, I got a wicked camp anyway. You know, I train with, uh, Elliot Compton is one of, if not the best middleweight kickboxer, tie boxer in the country. Um, I got the same coaches I've always had. Uh, you know, I train with Aaron Blackie. I think you've spoken to him a couple of times, man. He's up and coming. He's ready. Like the UFC should be picking him up soon. He's the uh, best featherweight in the country. You know, I, I train with, I already train with like secondary black belts in judo, black belts in jiu-jitsu. I train with, uh, you know, guys with 60 or 70 tie and kickboxing fights. You know, I train with guys from all those sorts of different areas, you know. I train with flyweights like Matt Seaton and... Uh, Stuart Nickel, like these guys have, you know, they got the gas tank. They're just going to push me constantly. You know, I don't need to hit them hard. They're just going to constantly stay on me. So they're making me work. And then I got the guys that are far more accurate than me, like Elliot and that, who can touch me, man, whenever they want. So, you know, it forces me to have good defense and all that sort of stuff. And then guys that can grapple way beyond my level. I got a little bit of everything in my camp. You know, we're a really small group of sort of, six to eight guys and um you know we have we have each other's back and we trust each other and we come we, have, we all have something to offer so i don't feel like that uh i need to bring anyone in um you know we 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 just make it work and we work on all parts of the game so we can take the fight wherever we want i think that's what makes me so dangerous compared to other guys i'm not one dimensional and you know i'm not a grappler i'm not a striker i'm someone that can fight the fight where the fight goes um you know like the last guy i fought he he was a wrestler man and he has a history of taking people's backs and suplexing them and doing all sorts of wrestling stuff to them and i never got taken down you know what i mean um that front choke threat is real and he knew that they drilled that and every time he tried to get me for a takedown i, I landed that chin strap grip and man he backed out so it's like I can do a little bit of everything and, and uh, I don't think that I need to bring people in. I just need to keep getting better. But, um, you know, I train twice on Mondays, twice on Wednesdays, and I train once Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and once on Saturday. So I just upped it. I just add in grappling sessions Thursday, Fridays, and uh, I add in a third session every day, so I do cardio every day. So that's uh, that's pretty much it, man. I just add in a couple of extra light sort of uh, sessions, and besides that, everything stays the same. When you look at at the path to winning this tournament what is the ideal path for you is it meeting since you don't fight pitbull in the in the first round is it meeting him at the end of the you know in the final no i don't care now i want to uh you know um i like to fight johnny case in the final um i don't know if they get if they do a draw for the semi-final as well i'm not sure you know i don't know if it's like brackets now and then we just you know, these two go down and these two go down. I got no idea. Uh, all I know is that who I got in the first round. So, um, 
you know, if they if they do a draw like on weigh-in night or something for the for the semi-final, then I'm down for that as well. Um, you know, I would like to fight him at some point um, because I feel like a win over him is not just good for me and Ryzen, but it's good for me overall. And uh, I feel like a win over him will increase my chances of getting fights in America again, uh, which I'm happy to do under the Ryzen banner. Um, but I'd like to fight in America again. Um, and I feel like it will make people take notice. Uh, in saying that, um, you know, I think that uh, Case is the same. You know, he's not one-dimensional. He's got an all-around game. And I feel like he can beat anyone. He's already proved that. He fought uh, Kotoko. He's had like 70 fights and he's a grappler. And uh, he finished him and then he finished Yusuke Yachi standing. So, it's like, you know, he's got an all-around game. And I, I think it'd be a perfect fight for a final. So, um, <clears throat> my ideal path, I guess, would be getting this one out of the way and then, uh, you know, hopefully fighting one of the Japanese fighters in the semifinals and then a, a final against either Petruki or Johnny Case. That'd be uh, the ideal path for me. Um, they're not easy fights, none of them are, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't, like I said, I don't want easy fights. I want fights that have an element of risk that increase the drive that I have during camp and the focus that I have. <laughs> Yeah, it must be uh, exciting, man. It's. Do you look at this tournament as uh, a way for yourself to like etch your name into the history books of MMA? Because you know, I'm pretty sure that's something that every fighter wants to do, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't really fight for the fame and uh, all that sort of stuff. But you know, I'd, I'd like, it, at least in my own country, to be remembered as the best lightweight to come out of this country, and I feel like I'm well on my way for that. Um. You know, I think I'm the only, well, until recently, you know, I, I think I'm probably, you know, one of the only lightweights that's made to the UFC, that's won in the UFC, that's fought internationally before that, fought internationally after that. Uh, you know, I've had I've had 31 pro fights. So it's, I, I just feel like, um, you know, i got a few losses on my record, but I feel like I've done more than anyone else. And I uh, feel like I'm well on my way with still a few years left to um, to cement my name as, as, you know, one of the best lightweights to come out of this country. So I feel like a win in this tournament, not just a win, but like winning the tournament itself would cement my name as the best lightweight to come out of the country at this point. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a big deal for me here in Australia. Um, and, you know, I think like pride and, um, all that, I think they, um, names get remembered. So, all right. Now, you know, I wanted to get your, uh, predictions or your thoughts on the first round, you know, the other fights you probably, you know, you look at Pitbull versus Kyle Jerry, you know, what is your breakdown of that fight? Um, look, man, you know, a lot of people saying Kyle Jerry's kind of getting thrown at the wolves. But, um, you know, he's, he's smart. He's, he might be older, but he's smart. He's got the ability to win any fight. But um, I think Patricky hits too hard. And I think um, Cal Jury get caught with a shot. Johnny Case. I think this fight is the, the probably the closest matchup is Johnny Case versus Roberto de Souza or Satoshi. You know, do you see this fight, you know, being easy for Johnny or is it going to be a dog fight? I think the thing that Johnny has in this one, see, Souza is not a striker, but he's won two by TKO recently. But I, I definitely wouldn't see him as a striker or even fancy him as a striker. You know, he doesn't throw straight punches. He kind of loops them over, but he's caught a couple of guys. Um, I think Johnny has probably got that reach, you know, that's going to match Souza. So I think that the reach is going to play into this one. And I think Johnny will keep the distance really easy. And I think he'll pick him apart. The last one is Luis Gustavo versus Hiroto Usaki. Now, what are your thoughts on this one? Man, I, you know, besides Usako's uh, last fight, I just don't think that, uh, like, I wouldn't know enough about him, really. Um, but just judging from his last fight, I think that uh, Gustavo is way too aggressive, mm. way too kind of... Um, not flashy, but he throws a lot of random stuff, a lot of jumping stuff. I think that he'll catch him. And Gustavo win by TKO. 
a lot of exciting matchups, you know, including yours, you know, a lot of finishes on the horizon. October 12th, Ryzen 19, Osaka. Damien, thanks for the time, man. And uh, it's always good talking to you. Good luck into the, in the tournament. And hopefully I'll be talking to you before the, the next round. Awesome, man. Thanks for that. I appreciate it.